Hi, now you're here again with the new features for Audioswift version 2.3.5 beta. Available to download now on the audioswiftapp.com website. This version adds the option to choose the controller mode directly from the trackpad window. The MIDI keys can also be enabled from here. In the trigger mode, we can now set the scales from the drums type. Before it wasn't available. This is to be used with tuned percussive instruments. Setting a scale also highlights the tonic notes of the scale in the trackpad window. And pads trigger are animated. To clear the tonic notes, right click the trackpad window and choose clear tonic notes. For Ableton Live users, I've updated the audio swift control script for the slider mode to version 1.1. It fixes some bugs and adds the option to change tracks using the keys left and right. You need to download the script from the website and replace it in the Ableton Live folder. If you're new to the AudioSwift Control script, check out the previous video of version 2.3.4 and watch how you can get better integration in Ableton Live with the slider mode. Short throw sliders. When using any slider in absolute format, the physical distance when moving the finger from minimum to maximum value is around 100 millimeters by default, using the Magic Trackpad 2 as a reference. This mimics a standard 100 millimeter MIDI fader found in some hardware. Of course, using other trackpads like the ones on the MacBook, the distance will be proportionally smaller. Now we have the option to reduce this to around 60 millimeters. Some composers prefer this type of sliders for controlling virtual instruments. Go to Preferences, Slider and X Wide, and enable Short Throw Sliders. The distance will be reduced to around 2 thirds or 60 millimeters for any slider in absolute format. Moving higher, we'll continue to send the maximum value of 127. Take notes that by enable this feature, the overall sensitivity of the sliders in other formats will change a little. Adjust them back to your taste by using the MIDI controller sensitivity settings. Also, the short throw sliders option is not available if the sliders are set to send pressure messages or 14-bit MIDI CC. AudioSwift now supports MIDI CC messages in 14-bit resolution for sliders and XY pads. This gives more precision when controlling parameters values like filter frequency or detuning. The controllers use a pair of CC numbers to divide the 14-bit messages and get a higher resolution from 0 to 16383, instead of the standard 0 to 127 in 7-bit controllers. It uses one lower CC number for the most significant bit, and another CC number 32 steps above for the least significant bit. The parameter mapped in 14-bit should know how to read the information coming from both CC numbers, or otherwise it will only read the most significant bit or lower CC number and ignore the other. This is how it works. Go to Preferences, Slider and XY and enable 14-bit MIDI CC resolution. The slider or XY pad should be set to regular or absolute format. The CC numbers should be in the range between 0 and 31. If you choose anything from 32 or above, the controller will continue working in 7-bit mode. I choose number 5 with this slider. See that the return to default option is not available with controllers working in 14-bit. When I call audio shift, the slider will start sending MIDI through CC5 and CC37. The current MIDI value sent is displayed in both console and trackpad windows. With the XY mode, the XY pad's values are displayed in the settings panel of the console, while in the main panel it will be shown as an asterisk. Press the Option key while touching the controller to reset the value back to 0 for the sliders, and to 8191 for XY pads. This default value can't be changed like in 7-bit controllers. Press the command key while touching the controller for fine tuning. Just like the short throw sliders, enabling the 14-bit option will change the overall sensitivity of all controllers working 
on 7 bit. Again, use the MIDI sensitivity settings to adjust this. For controllers working in absolute format and 14 bit, you'll notice that you won't get all of the values continuously. It could jump between values in ranges of 40 steps. This is because I had to change the sensitivity of the trackpad. Adjust it to a middle ground where a change is valid and also avoid accidental changes or big jumps in values when you lift the finger. If you require more precision than that, change the controller to regular format and use the command key. MIDI mapping. Your DAW or plugin should be set to recognize 14-bit MIDI CC or otherwise it will only react to the values sent by the lower CC number. I'll give you some examples on how to MIDI map the controllers. First with a Huey plugin. All of their synths and effects have a panel for MIDI learning and a MIDI table. We are going to use both. Go to Audio Swift Preferences, Slider and XY and disable the 14-bit option. We are only going to send 7-bit for now and I'll explain why in a second. In your UE plugin go to the Middle Learn section and click the parameter to control. I'll click the cutoff frequency. In the Audio Swift console I set my slider to 5 and in regular format. Activate Audio Shift with a 4 or 5 fingers tap and start moving the controller. Hit Escape. The parameter is mapped to CC5. Now go back to the MIDI table section in your plugin. The parameter should appear here. The reason we disabled the 14 bit before is because the plugin would have recognized only the higher CC number or CC37. And we don't want that. The MIDI table Go to Type and choose Continuous 14-bit. Now the parameter will accept both CC5 and CC37 and it will recognize them as 14-bit. Close the MIDI table. Return to Audio Preferences and now enable again 14-bit option. Close the Preferences window. Activate Audio with a 4 or 5 fingers tap and start moving the controller. We can control the parameter with a 14-bit precision. With Ableton Live, we are going to use its MIDI Learn function. Enable the 14-bit feature in Audio Swift Preferences window. I have my slider set again to CC5 and regular format. In Ableton Live, enable the MIDI Learn function by pressing Command M. Click the desired parameter to map. In this case, the cut off frequency. Activate Audio Swift with a 4 or 5 finger tap and touch the controller. Hit Escape. Make sure the parameter is set to absolute 14 bit in the lower panel. If for some reason this menu is not shown, click another parameter, select the desired parameter again and it will appear. Look that in the MIDI mappings table the parameter is mapped to the lower CC number 5. This is fine. Turn off the MIDI learn by pressing Command M again. Now activate Audio Swift again and start moving the parameter with 14 bit precision. With Logic Pro, we are going to use the MIDI Learn function inside the app. Make sure the 14 bit option is enabled in Audio Swift and set the controller, in this case CC5 and regular format. Click the plugin parameter. Press Command L to activate the Logic's Learn mode. Activate Audio Swift with a 4, 5 finger tap and touch the controller. Hit Escape. Disable the Learn Mode button. Logic will automatically map the parameter to both CC5 and CC37. You can see it in this section. Close the window and try out Audio Swift with the parameter. So which MIDI mapping method should you use? It depends. Using the MIDI mapping from within your plugin means that the messages are recorded inside the MIDI region. But further editing is really difficult because the data is divided into two separated curves for each CC number. However, using the MIDI learn function inside your DAW, the data is only one curve and it's in the automation lane for the parameter. It's easier to edit. Choose the option that is better for you. That's all for this beta version 2.3.5. Please give it a try and let me know how it works for you. See you next time.